This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Alright, let's keep this going. In the last video, which you don't need to watch for this one, we ended with a brief look at what a spherical universe might look like, or a universe with positive curvature. Just take this in for a sec. This is actually one of many possible spherical universes that can exist, there's not just one, and this program offers a bunch of them. Honestly, I couldn't tell you mathematically why all of these spaces look the way they do, because yeah, all of them are really strange. But we're going to get a good idea of what we're looking at by analyzing the simplest spherical universe, and that's the three sphere. This is the classic 4D hypersphere model of the universe where we'd be living on the 3D hypersurface, which would be a three sphere. That would be our universe, so while we may think we're moving straight through space, for example, we'd actually be moving along a curved path in a higher spatial dimension. This is what that universe would look like if the radius of the hypersphere weren't too large. So take this in now. And if you want to challenge, see if you can figure out what's happening here. Note, I am not doing anything fancy. I know it looks like I'm turning around or hitting reverse or something, but I'm not. I'm simply moving forward with this program. And something really strange happens when we pass through the Earth too that causes this effect, but we'll get there. Alright, first to understand this, we need to understand how beams of light enter our eyes. And to make that as simple as possible, consider a flatland creature looking at a flat line segment. Now the question is, how much of that flatland creature's vision is taken up by that line segment? Well, to find this out, what we could do is draw light beams that come from each end of that line segment and enter the eye of the flatlander. We can then use that angle, let's say 60 degrees, to determine how large this line segment appears to the square. Like, if the flatland creature's line of sight is 180 degrees, then the line segment takes up one-third of his field of view. If the line segment gets closer to expand the angle to 90 degrees, then it now takes up half the square's field of view. Nothing new here, an object gets closer to you and it takes up more of your vision and thus looks bigger. But if we extend the lines that connect those ends and put another line segment in the picture that also touches those lines, then this new line segment appears just as large as when the first one was here, or really takes up the same proportion of our field of view. If we put a really small line segment but closer to the square, then same thing. It will appear just as large and still take up half of what we see in this case. Now, in three dimensions, we are pretty good at determining depth and knowing that the larger object is, in fact, further from us. But there are plenty of those forced perspective illusions that definitely challenge this, making it difficult to determine the true size of different objects in a picture or video. So for our purposes, just assume the angle is the sole indicator of how large the creature will perceive that object. All of these would appear to be the same distance away, for example. Okay, now let's put the same flatlander in a spherical universe, which I'll just show by putting his eye up here. But assume he's part of the surface, and this is his universe. Now the beams of light are going to travel with the surface, they won't escape. And since beams of light travel in a straight line in Euclidean space, then they'll travel along great circles in the spherical world. It's the spherical equivalent of a straight line. Since this often leads to confusion, I want to emphasize latitude lines, not counting the equator, are not great circles. If you wanted to walk along a latitude line, you'd have to curve. Very little, but you still would. If you walked perfectly straight on an ideal sphere, you'd walk along some great circle. And light will behave the same for the Flatlander's universe. It will travel straight along great circles. Okay. Now let's, again, add a line segment that's living in the same universe and draw some beams of light coming off the ends. They travel straight, or along great circles, back to the Flatlander's eye, and now we know the Flatlander will see the line segment, whose size is determined by this angle. 
Same as before. And I won't put a numerical value because it doesn't matter. Then if the line segment were to move away, that angle would decrease since the line segment spans fewer longitudinal lines. So nothing new here. The object moved further away, the angle decreased, and thus it appears smaller. But look at what happens as the line segment moves even further away. The angle created by the light coming from those ends increases now. The line segment goes through more longitudinal lines, and thus it starts to appear larger. When it gets to the point that is diametrically opposite of the flatlander though, then light coming off the line segment can be traced back in all directions, as no matter which way the flatlander looks, it will see the line segment. The line segment completely takes up its field of view. Now we're ready for the hypersphere universe. What I'm going to do is replace the line segments with a flat blue dot and keep it down here. Whereas we, the creature, are going to walk around this universe, again, assuming we are part of the surface. Then I'm just going to put this on top of the actual hypersphere universe. So we have a three sphere and an earth. Then in the top corner, we have a two sphere and a blue dot. And I'm going to have everything move together so we can make comparisons. Currently, light is coming from the earth or blue dot to us, curving with the universe, which allows us to see it. As we get closer, the Earth gets larger as it should. And then we go through it, and let's pause, because what just happened? We're still moving forward, and it seems like we should be looking at nothing. But we still see the Earth, rather large. And that's because we're just seeing the light coming from the other direction, wrapping around the sphere. And it's coming from the same point. Don't worry that the distance is further, because remember, we didn't care about that. Just the fact that the angle created here is fairly large at the moment, making the Earth appear large, even though it's far away in this direction. Also, let's back this up. Before going through the Earth, we could see most of Africa, which would be on this side of the blue dot in the 2D case. It's what we're looking at. After we go through the Earth, we still see Africa but it's upside down. We still see the same spot because it's light from the same side. It's just wrapping around the sphere now. The reason things are upside down is because when light travels along all those great circles, once it hits the diametrically opposite side, the beams cross over one another such that they invert the image. So the Earth didn't flip, but the beams of light are creating that illusion. Then we move further away and Earth gets smaller until we pass the equator. Then it starts getting bigger until... Stop here. This is weird because look at the top corner. The blue dot or Earth is not even close to us. In fact, it almost couldn't be further. So why does it look so big right now and like we're about to cross it? Well, that's because we are on the diametrically opposite side, almost. And remember, when an object is directly opposite of you, you will see it no matter where you look. And that becomes apparent when I move a little closer. Check this out. We are not inside the Earth right now. We aren't even close to the Earth. But light from the Earth is reaching us in all directions, so no matter where we look, we see it. And because of the way light beams behave in this spherical universe, the Earth appears to be kind of inside out, like wrapping in on itself. But that's what will happen when you look at something diametrically opposite of you in this universe. As we keep moving, then the Earth appears to get further from us until we pass the equator again, and then it gets closer. And now we are actually in front of the real Earth. This would then just continue as you kept moving forward, and that's what you were seeing earlier. All you're doing is moving in what you think is a straight line, but really you're wrapping around a higher dimensional sphere, moving along higher dimensional great circles as you do so. So, there we have it. And now you should have a better idea 
of why the size of the different Earths was so weird in this universe. Notice how the objects far away are bigger and in the middle they're smaller, which matches what we saw before. And this explains why if I angle the camera properly, the Earth can appear like it's all around us, as if we're in the middle. Even though, now you know that's not true. It's just how light behaves in a spherical universe. And since things don't look like this when we look out into our universe, does that mean our universe is not spherical? Well, not necessarily. On a small hypersphere, we could recognize this curvature. But if we're on a hypersphere many times larger than the observable universe, then detecting that curvature is much more difficult, and things wouldn't look like this. So we still can't say for sure what our universe globally looks like. I think that's enough spherical space for one video, but if you're looking to learn more about physics, cosmology, and the possible shapes of our universe, you can find a lot more over at Brilliant, this video's sponsor. Two courses you'd likely enjoy if you made it this far are Gravitational Physics and Astronomy. These courses go through topics such as the shape of the universe, what it would mean to have a Euclidean versus spherical versus hyperbolic universe, how this is all linked to dark matter, and even possible futuristic events like the fate of the universe, which I find to be really interesting. What I like about this platform is that all their courses come with animations and visuals to really help you understand the more advanced concepts. And on top of what we've seen here, they have dozens of other options in math, science, engineering that I know many of you will find interesting whether you want to just learn something new or get ahead for the next semester. Then the first 200 people to sign up by using the link below or going to brilliant.org slash zackstar will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.